Hi, I'm Melissa, and this is The Book Break. And today we're talking to a historical fiction author who has such an amazing book to bring in, and that's Heather B. Moore. We're just going to bring her right in. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Heather. So, like, I'm I'm your big fan. Um, I just have to say that right off the bat. And I was so excited to see your new historical fiction novel, and that's The Slow March of Light. And this took place during the Cold War, right? Oh. Yeah, so I was um, very uh, flattered to be able to write this book for Bob and Nama. He um, had told his his family about this story just a few few years ago, and so they wrote to my publisher and said, "We have a story from our dad." And of course, I'm sure many publishers get these type of requests, but for whatever reason, it really intrigued everyone at my publishing house, and then I ended up being the writer on the project. Yeah, well, I can tell you the reason. The reason is because it's a great story. <laughs> and and you have a great reputation for historical fish, fiction. Like last year, you did um, the Paper paper Daughters so, of Chinatown, yeah. right? Yep. And so I think this is a great historical fiction novel. And I just want you to tell our viewers a little bit more about it because it's it's awesome. I mean, so I'll let you go. Okay, sure. So the story follows Bob and Nama, who was drafted into the U.S. Army in 1959, and he was in in Utah State getting his master's, and he planned to go to law school at George Washington University. Well, of course, getting drafted into the Army completely changed his plans, and he ended up going to basic training and then further training in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Then he was sent to West Germany, and this was now 1960, and this was basically in the epicenter of the Cold War. And after he was in West Germany for several months, his commanding officer asked him to go undercover into East Germany. And he would start as a college student in East Berlin, and he would become the TA to professor that had the the rights to go throughout East Germany and do a lecture tour. And during this lecture tour, Bob would travel with him and help him with his lecture, but he'd also plot and target um, nuclear, nuclear sites for potential targeting by the US government. And then he'd send back those coordinates to the US government. So obviously this was um, spy work and it was dangerous and Bob ends up getting caught and arrested by the Soviets. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I mean, I'll just admit my ignorance here. I didn't actually realize that the government was drafting soldiers during the Cold War in the 60s. I didn't realize that. Um, and so Bob, he was in a great place in his life, but the draft was a huge surprise yeah. to him. Yeah. And, and the reason the draft was active is because of the Vietnam War. So he even said his parents were relieved that he wasn't going to go to be a, he wasn't going to an active war site. And so everyone thought, oh, you can go to Germany and you don't have to worry about getting into actual combat or battle. But of course, as you study and look back at the Cold War, there was a lot of tension there. Um, Berlin was kind of the center of all this. And you had, once the Berlin Wall, wall went up in 1961, it even created more tension because a lot of people didn't like the wall and families are separated and they wanted to be able to have freedoms to travel throughout their own country. Yeah. And, and another part of your book that I really loved was you had a really strong female character in there mm -hmm. and her name was Louisa and she was a German that was trying to help people. Tell us more about her. So Louisa is based on a woman that Bob did know in Frankfurt and, um, but he just, he, one of the things he told me was that um, we were friends and we went to socials together. That was the terminology back then, but her father did not like American soldiers. So that was kind of a clue to Bob that we can be friends, but that's all. And, but what happened is um, I wanted to create a counter character to Bob. And so I developed her further and I had her be basically the alternate point of view. And I was looking into different stories um, about West Germans that helped East Germans. And there were a lot of underground groups where they would literally help East Germans escape East Germany. And sometimes it was digging tunnels under the Berlin Wall or helping them in other ways. Um, 
So I, I created this Louisa character, and even though most of her character is fictional, I based her story and her um, plot arc on true stories of West, West Germans and West Berliners that help their fellow countrymen. Yeah, and I thought, you know, the story of her trying to help folks get over to the West side. I mean, they had to crawl in little tunnels for mm -hmm. about two hours, right? Yeah. In fact, um, there's a lot of tunneling that was done. And in fact, uh, NBC news stations sponsored and paid for one of the tunnels to be dug. And usually a few people could escape but then they were caught and so the tunnel was destroyed. So there's a tunnel that's called Tunnel 57. And the reason it's called that is because 57 people were able to escape. And that was the biggest escape group in, in the history of the Berlin Wall. Yeah. So with NBC sponsoring that, did the Soviets who were in control of East Germany, did they know NBC was, was I think, sponsoring I think they probably found out eventually, but at the time they didn't, because it was basically their funding. They had um, different shifts of men and women digging. So they were digging like 24 hours a day, seven days a week um, to get this tunnel dug. And so they were basically funding um, behind the scenes. But you could Google Tunnel 57 Berlin and you'll all these articles will pop out. It's really fascinating. And in fact, they had a news crew go in and film parts of it as well. So you can see some of that too. Wow. That would all, all have been filmed from the West side. Wow, that's crazy. And then while you were doing research for this book, you actually met the real Bob and talked with him, right? Right. Yeah. So one of the things is when we decided to write his book is it was right at the beginning of the pandemic in March and he was going to come to my, he was in Idaho, I was in Utah. He was gonna to come to Idaho and we're all gonna have this big meeting and talk about things. But then of course, everything changed in the world. So the first time we, we met was by video conference call. And he he just told me the story and I just just tell me what you wanna tell me. And his wife had actually kind of written up parts of it in a little personal history. So I had both those sources and I said, okay, I need like two or three weeks just to research the Cold War 100%. And then I will start emailing you once or twice a week, a list of questions. And I said, I'll need answers back within a day or two. It's gonna go kind of fast. And so that, so all the question and answering started in April, um, but the pandemic continued. So I didn't feel like I could go up to Idaho or he couldn't come to Utah. And then finally September of 2020, I was going up in that area for something else. And so I asked them, I said, can you, can we stop, you know, can I stop in and meet you and I'll wear my mask and everything. Um, so we did, we got to meet for the first time. The book had actually already been submitted to my publisher. He had read the draft of the manuscript. And then um, anyway, and then we just kind of kept in touch. I sent him the cover, I sent him like the final version. And then early summer this year, I thought I would love to just have Bob tell his story in person and maybe break it up into shorter videos or create a book trailer. And so I talked to my publisher and we grabbed one of their videographers. And on June 30th of 2021, we met with Bob and spent several hours and he told his story. And then of course the publisher and the video, you know, they like, you know, would break it up a little bit into smaller clips, but it was just a wonderful experience spending time with him and his wife. And, um, and then I got the sad news on just after August 9th that I found out that he had passed away on August 9th. So he did get to read the manuscript. He did get to see the paperback arc. And I really think that he was, ex well, his family said that he was so excited about the book, but I really think it wasn't just having, I mean, everyone write a book about my life. I'm, you know, I'm so awesome. I don't think it was that at all. I think it was because he had held in these, these secrets for over 60 years and he was finally able to let them go and finally able to share that burden. Um, just a few people in his family had known the extent of what he had gone through. And I thought, why is this, this, this the case? In fact, I've talked to other friends of mine that have had parents that have gone through horrific times and they don't want to talk about it. They were, they were in World War II or, or in some other situation and they don't want to talk about it. But something happens when they get a little bit older and all of a sudden the memories start to return and they suddenly feel like that maybe the trauma is distant enough 
that they can talk about it and it's not so painful and it actually will, you know, it'll, they find a way to help ease other people's burdens and pain. And that's really what I found when I was working with Bob and writing his story and researching the, the era, the Cold War history is how much courage happened back then and how how much people rallied around, you know, even if they're, they're um, Soviet tanks facing you, these West Germans were still willing to help. Yeah, yeah. And I think something that I, I want our viewers to know is that this is an era of time that maybe we're not told a whole lot about mm -hmm. um, because it was the Cold War and then it was the 60s. And so most of us hear more about the Vietnam War. But what was going on in Germany was an extremely important point in our time. So I really encourage everyone to check out this book, The Slow March of Light by Heather B. Moore. And we can find you. Um, I mean, you're all over social media and you have a website. And so um, also you can go to her publisher, Shadow Mountain as well. And it, and your books everywhere online and in, and in physical bookstores too, right? Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Heather. And for our viewers, thank you for joining us in the book break and we'll see you next time.